Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie. So this is going to be my Flash episode 13 video all about Firestorm. The, the title of the episode was Nuclear Man. So this was the introduction of what Firestorm is going to look like in the DC TV universe. Just like with Barry Allen's Flash shoot, the producers have said that there will be an evolution of the Firestorm costume. So the costume that we saw in this episode will change over time. They've taken their time introducing the character, but I, I think once they establish him, they'll start using him more often. What I'd really like to see is Firestorm become a critical part of the finale. I'll try to dig through that a little bit as I work through my top five moments in the Easter eggs. There's a whole bunch of stuff going on in the episode, so I'll actually, I'll explain some of the really big stuff first. Okay, just careful for spoilers from the episode if you haven't seen it yet, so let's get going. Starting with blood samples. Cisco said that one was Barry's from the future, so we're talking like older Barry Allen goes back in time, and the other one was unknown, meaning it was not a match for Wells. A lot of you were asking questions about this on Twitter while the episode was going on. So he said that he tested both samples, meaning that he tested Wells' sample, and it was not a match, meaning there are two reverse flashes. I don't really consider that news. I always felt like there were going to be two flashes. There's going to be a crazy reverse flash, and there'll be the Harrison Wells reverse flash that's trying to save his wife. Here's what I think the producers are doing with the, the two villain characters, the two reverse flashes. They're just mixing and matching aspects of all the reverse flashes. So it'd be kind of misleading to call one of them Hunter Zolomon and one of them Professor Zoom because you'll have like an Eobard Thawne character with aspects of Hunter Zolomon's character. So whenever they finally reveal everything, what, what we'll say is like, this is Eobard Thawne with Hunter Zolomon's backstory, or this is Hunter Zolomon with some aspects from Eobard Thawne's history. So just remember that when you're theory crafting. And yes, I, I think it was the crazy reverse flash that killed Barry's mother. As much as Harrison Wells seemed like a dick in this episode, like he, he wanted to kill Ronnie Raymond and Professor Martin Stein to stop the nuclear reaction. He shared his fries and he sacrificed the tachyon prototype. He cannibalized that to make the Firestorm device. Technically, you could call him a villain because he is the reverse flash and he's deceiving everyone. He hurt a lot of people for selfish reasons. But that doesn't mean that he's a psychotic serial killer. And it seems like the other Reverse Flash, the one whose identity we don't know yet, it seems like he's more psychotic. I think once they introduce time travel on the show in the next couple of episodes, we'll start to learn who that other Reverse Flash is. And also, if you're confused by why they lingered on the shot of that Flash ring while Harrison Wells was, you know, holding his neck with the Flash ring like really clear in frame, I think what they're teasing with that is that he just has a much deeper connection to the Flash. A lot of people, when we first met him, thought he might be a future version of Barry Allen, especially with the Flash Ring, but the Reverse Flash also gets a Flash Ring. Okay, so moving into the fun stuff. Top 5 moments. Number 5. Driving safely while kissing a pretty girl. Probably one of the best Einstein quotes I've ever heard a TV show throw out. Victor Garber was saying it, talking about his life, but it shines a light on what's going on in Barry's life. It's what inspires him to go after and eat that super hot pepper. That's the show telling us that they're going to continue to be a thing. So I'm hoping Melise Jout stays on the show for a while because Linda Park is a really big part of the Flash history in the comics. And Melise Jout is just a lot of fun. It's just nice to have a female on the show with her energy. The show would be so much less fun if no one was having sex on it. And I've, actually, I felt like they really shined a light on that in this episode too. That there is a lot of sex happening in Central City, especially at Barry's old house. Cougar time for the win. I'm going to go ahead and take a wild stab in the dark and say Joe is not going to tap that. The funny thing is, is that the actor that plays Cisco said that Cisco might be finding some romance himself at a certain point. Wouldn't it be funny if in like a post credit scene or in like the comic, you see him quietly go back to that house to go on a date with that woman? That would be so gross and so funny at the same time. But I, I would like to see them bring on like Brie Larson from Community. I feel like she would be a good date for Cisco. On to number four, time travel flash cinema. Wasn't it awesome how they used the logic of the mirror to show like a, a projector reel of the Flash's fighting in the past? We actually saw them digging a little bit deeper into that footage. They, they end up showing it to Barry in the next episode. So is the show just pushing into the idea of time travel? They're going to start exploring time travel. That'll cross through the rest of the back of the season. So as we get further along in the episodes, we'll eventually see Barry start to time travel. First, it'll be kind of like the Groundhog's Day situation where he kind of stumbles through time travel. He accidentally stumbles into it. I think by the end of the season, he'll actually find a certain amount of control over time traveling. And now that Harrison Wells has destroyed his tachyon device, he can't time travel. So if he's going to go back in time to save his wife, he's going to have to find some other way to do it. Which actually leads into some Firestorm stuff. So on to number three, Firestorm versus the Flash. So this is before they get him under control. The big action set piece between the Flash and Firestorm. This is a lot of fun. It was really an effects sequence, and I, and I feel like The Flash doesn't have a huge budget, but the effects always look great. There are usually ways to get around not having a lot of money for effects. One, you don't do them for an extended period of time, and two, you try to shoot them at night so things don't stand out as much, so you don't focus as much on the details. That's also kind of how Arrow gets around their budget problems too. 
They both shoot 23 episodes a season, but they have a smaller budget than a lot of major network shows, so they just they don't have a lot of money to throw into effects. What I'm really interested to see is what Firestorm's powers look like now that he's slowly getting under control. Moving on to number two, Firestorm joins Team Flash. So he's not officially on the team yet. What, what happened at the end of the episode, at least what it seemed like happened, is that they were successful in separating Ronnie Raymond from Martin Stein, like their, their device worked. They have released some descriptions for some of the future episodes, so they teased that obviously, I mean, the Firestorm character is still going to be a thing on the Flash, so if they're going to be Firestorm, they have to merge into the Matrix again. So they're probably going to use that device to become Firestorm again. I think mostly it's going to be like a control device, help them control their powers. The, the real question is, is who is going to be controlling the Matrix? Who's going to be the mind and who will be the body? Obviously, it's a really simple answer. I mean, Robbie Mel is going to be the actor on the show. So it's always going to be Martin Stein driving the car in Ronnie Raymond's body. He'll be the car. They haven't said specifically whether or not they're doing it. But what I'm hoping to see is we get a shot of like inside the Firestorm Matrix with the floaty heads talking to each other. It'd be kind of like being inside Tony Stark's helmet whenever he's talking to Jarvis. Part of the energy between Ronnie Raymond and Martin Stein in the comics was the witty banter. So I'm really looking forward to that. And my number one moment, altered Harrison Wells' plans in General Eiling post credit scene. It's a two-part episode, so we've really seen like half the story. General Eiling is going to try and capture Firestorm and use him for military purposes. As a weapon, pretty likely. Like he was going to try and do with Plastique earlier this season. I also think that answers Jason Rush's comment from the previous episode. The mystery backer that they didn't know about, the person who provided the financial backing, it was probably General Eiling. That's why I think that when they found out about the nuclear blast, he was like, bam, Firestorm. He didn't even need to think about it. He knew instantly what it was. So on the side of that, because Harrison Wells clearly does not General Eiling, he'll probably try to help them out as part of Team Flash. But as the reverse Flash, as in terms of his secret plans, he sacrificed the Tachyon prototype to create the Quantum Splicer. I'm wondering if whatever new plan he comes up with to time travel involves using Firestorm's energy. I think we should all remember, too, that the reverse Flash is weak against Firestorm powers, both hot and cold stuff. I mean, that's why the rogues are also very important, because they have those weapons. If Team Flash is going to fight the reverse Flash, I feel like it would benefit them to use Firestorm and the rogues. If they're going to fight that villain, they're going to have to use weapons that he's weak against. And those other characters are the only ones that have those right now. It gets you even more pumped when episode 18 is called All-Star Team-Up, even though that doesn't refer to Firestorm. So let me know, what was your favorite moment from the episode, and where would you like to see them take the Firestorm character? I mean, do you want to see Captain Atom in season two? Because he's a big part of the Firestorm comics. I think that would be awesome. Like if they take their time introducing Firestorm, then they can introduce Captain Atom as part of that. All in all, great episode. So here are actually some of the Easter eggs that I spotted that, that I haven't already mentioned yet. So one, the Conway Award. That's actually named after Jerry Conway. He's the person that created Firestorm in the comics. Barry Allen says, please don't flame on. I know that sounds like a Fantastic Four reference, but that's also a Firestorm reference. That's something he says in the comics whenever he fires his powers up. When they're talking about blood samples on the screen here, they have both blue and yellow samples. I just visually, I feel like this is an Easter egg for the reverse flash, the yellow blood sample. They also have a nice heads up display for the Firestorm Matrix 2 on these computer monitors while they're talking about it. We see Harrison Wells' flash ring here again, very prominently displayed. I can't wait for Barry Allen to get a flash ring. In the comics, it has a number of uses. Mostly, the, the Wally West flash used it to contain his suit. So when he was running around, the suit would come out of the ring. I feel like eventually we'll get there, but it might be a couple seasons away. And finally, the adult blood sample from Barry Allen. So very clearly, Barry Allen is time traveling right now. While the flash is happening, an older version of Barry Allen is jumping around in the time stream, fighting the reverse flash trying to save his mother, just like Harrison Wells in the future is probably trying to save his wife. Just to talk a little bit more about that too, Harrison Wells, yes, I do think he is someone from the future. He has knowledge of the future, clearly. The thing about his wife dying though, that's truth. Regardless of where he is from in the timeline, like he came back in time and got stuck, I feel like his wife died in a car crash or died in an accident. So he's telling the truth about his wife, he's just not telling the truth about where he's from or his real identity. For those that are asking, Gorilla Grodd will be back in episode 15 at least. I don't expect to see him in next week's episode, but because General Eiling is back, we might get a Grodd Easter egg at the end of the episode. Hopefully, we'll get an Easter egg for the new Weather Wizard too, because he'll be back in episode 15, or he'll debut in episode 15. So lots of stuff to look forward to, lots of time travel, the other reverse Flash finding out who he is, although I totally think it's Eddie Thon. You guys can let me know if you agree though. The other reverse Flash, who is he? I didn't really have any big thumbs down about the episode. I thought they had a really interesting use of music. I mean, Uptown Funk at the beginning was kind of funny. Sometimes the songs that they pick are a little bit weird and it takes you out of it. 
Something else I, I also I noticed, I feel like Melise Zhao is kind of like a Felicity type character. Notice what she's wearing. She always seems like she's dressed to catch your eye. Just like everyone else in the background is dressed in really plain colors, but she's wearing this crazy looking pattern. I tried to find an Easter egg in her dress, but I, I didn't see anything that jumped out at me. So if you think her dress, like that pattern is an Easter egg for some comic book thing, let me know. In related news, I know a lot of you are asking about my Gotham video. I just, because of the special video, the fun video I posted yesterday, I had to, I had to move it around. I am posting Gotham next. I'll get that out before Arrow tonight. I don't know if I'll get my Agent Carter video out before that though. If I don't, I'll just post it after Arrow on Thursday. So don't worry, I'm also doing Q&As for The Flash and Arrow this week and for the big Marvel Sony announcement. So there's still plenty of time to ask questions to think of stuff for that. Okay, so while you guys wait for all that to happen, you can click here to catch up on The Flash and you can click here for my explainer for the Spider-Man Marvel announcement, Spider-Man in the MCU. Everyone is, is still freaking out. I'm still freaking out a little bit about it. So thank you so much for watching. Everybody high five. I'll see you tomorrow.